This power adapter struck me this week as unique. I wanted to do a power adapter with a screen for a while. Curious about how accurate the screen is or how much power it uses to have a gimmicky feature or if it has any point at all. So today I'll be looking at the Oteo 200 watt GAN charger. It actually has two times the GAN, GAN squared. It's obviously more GAN than is needed. So as usual, I'll put this power adapter through its paces, find out what it has or lacks for safety listings and efficiency marks, if it meets its claims and generally works. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons and channel supporters. Okay, so Oteo 200 watt GAN charger with the model number S200. It arrives in a box. The first thing you find in the box is the user manual. I guess that seems like a logical place to start, so let's take a look. It is fairly basic. It uses a table to explain the power output of the various ports, which I'm not a fan of. The website advertisement uses this table to show what it can do, and I much prefer the graphic. They should just put this in the user manual. Then the adapter is next, and it's wrapped in a bag. Digging deeper, we find the power cord, an IEC 320-C5 connector. This cord is short for a desktop adapter, only three feet long, and you get a desktop stand, which you can use or not use. After taking the adapter out of the bag, you find one extra peeling bits. This is not the worst I've seen. I kind of understand protecting the LCD. It comes with this film on it already anyway, probably. When looking at the actual adapter, it seems fairly premium. The face with the LCD screen, which we will certainly be checking out later, looks all right. There's a speck of dust under the screen, so a little attention to detail thing there. That little piece of plastic on the screen obviously didn't help much. The USB side shows five USB connections, two USB-A ports and three USB-C ports. If only one USB-A port is used, it can do QC 22.5 watts with 12 volts out. The USB-C ports can divide the 200 watts up, but it is not even port sharing if you use more than two ports. So no more than 100 watts on one port. The desktop stand doesn't stand a chance of plugging in or unplugging USB cables. It just drags the adapter across the table, so yeah, zero value in this thing. It can't handle either being plugged or unplugged without constantly moving it if not held down. You would think this would be the only performance criteria for a stand. On the back of the adapter, we find logos. The important bits, along with the input voltage ratings and voltages of outputs, we find not much else. This adapter is lacking basically everything else. No Department of Energy claims of efficiency, no safety listings at all. Really a disappointment here. We will find out more about this later. On the adapter, I see Vena listed on there. So I went and checked out the Vena webpage. We know about this company. They make the Wotobius brand and heaps of others we have looked at here before. The Wotobius 200 watt is powering my lights right now. Anyway, we can see the alternate model of this listing and it's already under five different brands on Amazon. Vena has made power adapters with safety listings before, so I'm curious why they are choosing not to bother. I know that the 200 Wotobius had heat issues and definitely did not pass the safety testing, so they straight up lied there. So maybe that that is the reason why they no longer have the safety listing marks. Something else to check out later on. Okay, getting into some weights and size comparisons. The packaging for this one weighs 152 grams. For the dimensions of the product, this is not a terrible sized package. The adapter itself is a heavyweight though, coming in at 725 grams, including the power cable and stand. In comparison with the Satoshi and Ugreen 200 watt adapters, this is about on par though. In terms of a size comparison, the adapter is the biggest of the bunch. This is actually a good thing. 200 watts of power delivery means that this thing has to get rid of some heat, and a bigger package means it's easier to do that. Once this thing is plugged in, we can see the idle power consumption is too high to meet the Department of Energy requirement. Technically, this shouldn't be for sale without this, but whatever, no one checks anymore. I also checked against the EU 20191782 and it doesn't meet that either. It is, however, better than a lot of other 200 watt power adapters. It is also a bit less stable, bouncing all over the place. This is the power factor correction circuit turning on and off. So considering this is powering an LCD screen, it is actually better than expected, but still bad overall. We will see if the actual efficiency of the device will meet energy efficiency requirements later on. The OTO power adapter has the normal modes of operation for a USB power delivery device. This current specification states normal modes of 5, 9, 15, and 20 volts for fixed output voltages that your device negotiates for. This also adds the 12 volt mode. This power adapter also has an adjustable output voltage mode called programmable power supply or PPS. This mode can help devices charge more efficiently and therefore faster. The power adapter has a 21 volt mode with up to 95 watts of power or 4.5 amps. This does mean that Samsung fast charging is on the menu all the way up to 45 watts or so. It should support this on two ports at once but not three. Let's turn the power up on this one and take a look at its performance. 
the power adapter is supplying the 100 watts into the first USB-C port no problem. And it looks like on plug-in of the second USB-C port, it does not interrupt that first port. So no renegotiation on that level. This will, however, do the dance of renegotiation on ports 2, 3, 4, or 5 as soon as any of them are in use. This is expected as it has to change how the power is distributed. On the positive, it is nice to see that it keeps the first port on all the time. The downfall is that is the other four ports act like an old 100 watt power adapter. They distribute power poorly. I almost expect two power adapters in this box connected to a common power factor correcting circuit. The LCD screen seems to be accurate enough for the idea of what you are getting. It looks like about two watts off on port one. The power factor correction is a technique to consume AC power as efficiently as possible. The higher the power factor, the lower the comparable current, and therefore the lower the loss in wires and transformers that supply your power. The goal is to have all the waves look the same shape as the yellow line, a sine wave. At the 200 watt power level, I have to say that it is mandatory to have power factor correction. The loss in wires becomes significant enough that it is costing you 10% or more of your chosen monetary units during heavy power usage. This power adapter has PFC on all the time, all the way down to 5 watts. It is even effective and somehow still fairly efficient. At 10 watts, things look good. At anywhere above that, it is extremely effective on 120 volts. At full load, this might be one of the cleanest alternating current set of waveforms I have seen. Impressive. Remember, no safety listing. So weigh all decisions based on that. Overload is testing when the device safely shuts down when too much power is drawn. This can happen from a short circuit or a misbehaving device. The power adapter tripped on overload at 106 watts. This is a safe limit and not cause for any concern. The power adapter has a third prong on the power connector and may have some connection through the earth pin. This is normal, but usually there is some protection in the circuit path, a current limiting resistor or a safety capacitor or both. In this case, it looks like the manufacturer went with a short circuit. So the USB ports are directly referenced to the earth mains. There are many products that do this, all pro audio gear, soldering irons, a desktop PC, oscilloscopes, but these are often classified different to a consumer product like this. As we have seen, safety listed products have a resistor in between the earth pin and the USB output. Here is a framework as an example, which did a great job of isolation by the way. The voltage levels were great on this power adapter. Each mode held within the tolerance of the USB specification. They shouldn't have any issues powering lots of devices. I also went ahead and looked at the DC output voltage on an oscilloscope and found that it is also looking quite good. The noise is very well under control at the output. AC coupled 10x probe, 20 MHz band with limit on, no averaging, short loop probe tip, peak to peak looks like around 40 millivolts at 100 watts. It gets better under lighter loads. Remember that this power adapter is earth referenced and your scope is earth referenced, so make sure you connect your probe correctly. The device thermal stayed nice and cool during all testing. I saw about 50 degrees C on the USB output ports, which were the hottest location. This was after 45 minutes of full load output. It will get hotter if left running for longer, but this is a pretty good result. Here is the detailed data for this device. Still not perfect, but this adapter is getting somewhere. The idle performance is not the best, it's on the high side for watts, but it's also lower than the other 200 watt adapters in direct comparison with it. The adapter efficiency is where things start to change. This adapter is excellent, it's really one of the best in class. The power quality score is very high under all the load conditions, and this would be expected for a power adapter like this. The power adapter will meet half of the requirement for the Department of Energy efficiency requirements, but no chance on the other end. Remember, no safety listing. It's like almost good. When switching over to 230 volts, the idle power data is higher. This is expected and normal, but here again, it is within line of expectations of 200 watt adapters. This also does not meet the EU energy efficiency requirements though. The power quality should get a little worse on 230 volts because the power factor correction circuits are a little less effective on higher voltages and lower power levels. And this is exactly what we see here. Hopefully the efficiency can make up for some of that lower level performance and wow, it does. This is a top tier efficiency performance. No safety listing, no safety listing, no safety listing. I said it three times, does that mean? No, can't be. Still doesn't have one. Okay, time to compare the data. I have several 200 watt adapters to compare to and a bunch of lower wattage ones as well. When comparing the idle data with the others, the wattage is better than some and worse than others. For the 200 watt category, it's actually on the better side of things, but still not good enough for efficiency standards. On the idle graph, right in the middle, as expected. The quality of all these adapters is good on the idle since they are generally filtered heavily on the AC input side. When comparing the overall data with other adapters, these adapters end up looking great. It is very high power quality and therefore achieves strong marks across all the categories. It isn't the best, but it's up there. 
On the average power consumption graph, the same story is visible. When this power supply is active, it is a very solid performer. There is that one issue of safety though. Let's talk about value. This is going to end up fairly high on the value chart. This is because this adapter is reasonable cost for getting to 200 watts. It is still expensive, but comparatively it sets it a bit apart. We can see that lack of safety listing again. Okay, well, there it is. Another power adapter reviewed. This power adapter is so close to being a strong recommendation. It has some issues though. The ground pin being directly connected to the output is not normal practice for an adapter like this where people will definitely be interacting with the outputs on a regular basis. It is common for other classes of devices as mentioned, but here you usually expect some isolation in either a resistor or a capacitor or both. The lack of the safety listing seems lazy. If you went through an effort of making a product of this quality, why not just go for it? Vina has certainly gone through the process on other adapters, it just seems so lazy. There is a possible trade-off though. The performance is better in this adapter and that may be because some safety corners were cut. You can get better performance with better transformer coupling, which means less safety isolation. This is speculation though, as I don't know what is inside of this device. You know the next question, don't you? You wanna see inside of this thing, don't you? So power performance wise, it won't meet energy efficiency requirements because of the idle usage. It doesn't claim it though. The active power performance is among the best though. A little more work and I would have say this is the 200 watt crown, but for now, no one gets it because they're all broken in one way or another. At $100, I'd just buy two 100 watt adapters over this one 200 watt adapter. Okay, I didn't bother with the sticker this time, but this is tested and on the database so you can take a look at how it stacks up. The efficiency is high and the power quality is high, but sometimes that comes at the trade-off of safety and I think that was done here. Thanks for watching. I have seen significant declining viewership, so if you made it this far, let me know what kinds of content you would like to see. I think I need a break from power adapters, ha. I have some PC projects, repairs, other builds. Check my website for upcoming videos. There's a bunch of topics scheduled further out. USB cables next week though. Goodbye.